Welcome back, you beautiful people. We are Gemma and Campbell, and this week we might just have found Spain's best kept secret. Yeah. This is possibly one of the most scenic drives I have ever seen. I can't believe the views of this is magical. I just cannot believe that this is in Spain. Wow. So far on our epic European road trip, we have seen some seriously incredible sights. From the beautiful city of Rouen to the stunning countryside of northern Spain. This week, however, may just top them all as we accidentally stumble across one of Spain's best kept secrets. Well, from us, anyway. As our road trip takes us across the northern coastline of Spain, we stumble across the outdoor paradise of the Pico de Europa National Park, one of the most beautiful landscapes in the entire world. Join us for a week of adventure as we drive through some of the most breathtaking landscapes in Europe and show you what van life in northern Spain is really like. If you're new around here and want to see more of our European road trip, then hit that subscribe button and join the gang. But for now, let's check back in as we continue on our journey along the stunning coastline of northern Spain. So good morning everybody, we have decided to come down to this beautiful little spot right on the seaside, just a 10 minute drive from where we slept last night. We're going to go back to that little town because it is so cute and show you more about that in a little second. But we basically just got back from our morning run, the sun was splitting the sky and we just had to come and check out this beach because it just looked so beautiful. Oh, how have I missed the sand between my toes. This feels nice, doesn't it? It feels very nice. I know, I feel like I'm becoming a bit of a sunshine person these days. <laughs> I'm just enjoying this warm weather. Those waves are wild, absolutely wild. The craziest part is, as you just know, last week we were literally freezing ourselves in Rowan, driving down through France, and this is exactly why. We drove so far so quickly, just because we needed a little bit of vitamin D. Feels like forever since we could actually enjoy the heat. And this, it's not that long, it's not been it's that not long been at that all, long. has it? I mean, we literally left Asia, but that made me realize how much I prefer being warm to being cold. But this view, guys, honestly, one of the most breathtaking views I've ever seen. So this beach is called Playa de Tangi, and it's got stunning views of the Pico de Europa over in the background. There's massive crashing waves, and it is just absolutely breathtaking. Honestly, the Spanish coastline on the northern coast is just like nothing I've ever seen before. It's like the Great Ocean Road meets the Alps with the mountains in the background. It is just like incredible. And there's even some people in there braving the water. I don't, oh no, she's giving up. She's coming straight back oh, out again. Those waves just look wild. too crazy. It is wild. If I hadn't already showered and like just got ready, I'd maybe be tempted, but you know, <laughs> living in a van, getting more water, just like. Yeah, another that. shower. Another day, we'll go in. <laughs> And that right there is exactly where we are off to next. I have been missing the mountains. Seeing that snow is making me a little bit nervous though because I'm expecting it to be very cold. But luckily we've sorted out our gas and we have heating. But oh my goodness, that view is absolutely insane. So beautiful. Honestly, it just blows my mind so much guys. How quickly you can just go from a beautiful sunny beach to snow capped mountains here in Spain. I did not expect that at all. So last night when we were trying to sleep, I woke up to this very strange noise in the middle of the night and I could not figure out what it was. I've got a little bit of a fright and I think I've just found out who the culprit oh, was. Loads, oh, run, run, run. Like loads of cats. I wonder actually whether they live down there because this morning I was lying in bed with my Kindle for a bit and I could hear this like, well I could hear the cats basically, it sounded like they were playing. But I looked out and I couldn't really see anything because all I could see was this big wall. There's loads of them and they're all so nosy. There's one over there. You've got two over there. One just ran into the bushes. One, two. You want to take one in the van? No, that would be sad. I wouldn't want to separate them. They seem like they're all like a little family, don't they? We need all of them then? Yep. <laughs> but this here was where we slept for the night. There is a sign on the entrance to the car park that says caravan six euros and I think that means you can stay 24 hours. However, there's no one here to collect the money. So I don't know if it's because it's the off season. You can pretty much park here for free. Very, very quiet. Right next to the town centre, which is where we're going to head to now and go and get some food. And welcome guys to the very cute and quaint Spanish town of Santa Lima del Mar. This is like possibly one of the most traditional Spanish towns that you could imagine. It sits right in the green rolling hills of northern Spain and the buildings around here are just absolutely beautiful. They're like proper casas overlooking the sea and the distant mountains of the Pico de Europa. And we're just going to go for a little wander around the town now, try and find somewhere cute for breakfast. 
All right, this is turning out to be a lot more difficult than I actually thought it was going to be. I thought as a tourist hub, people would be begging to get us in the doors. I don't know if it's just because it's still middle of March, but everywhere seems to be shut. And it has just proven to be quite an impossible task, to be honest here. Aha, this looks a bit more promising. Okay, chocolate churros seem to be common. I've seen that outside a lot of places. Now, this is not a bad way for breakfast, is it? It's absolutely not. We finally found somewhere and we decided to order a little selection. So we have gone for a croissant, which is absolutely massive. One of these little tapas bits, it looks like it's maybe mozzarella, tomato, balsamic vinegar on some toasted bread. And of course, we've gone for the Spanish cuisine of churros with chocolate because that seems to be what's on the menu everywhere here. So give it a shot. Mm, it's not mozzarella. I don't know what it is, it's like a kind of feta. Very nice. Uh, always trust me to make a mess. Don't. Right, so we've got churros but no chocolate sauce. What do we think? I was actually wondering whether this was the chocolate sauce and I've been drinking it like a hot chocolate. Because <laughs> it's very, very chocolatey. We could always try dipping them. They look good. Good start to the day, definitely. This is such a cute little town. I can see why it is so popular. We've seen quite a few tour buses pull up already and this is in the off season. But the buildings and the architecture around here is like really, really pretty. And I feel possibly traditionally Spanish as well. It's got a really nice vibe about it. It's not overly busy. It's just really quaint and I really like it. It was safe to say that we were falling in love with the beauty of Northern Spain as we explored its quaint towns and rolling hillsides. Little did we know, however, the best was still yet to come as we turned our nose towards one of Spain's most beautiful regions, the Pico de Europa National Park. So we have just entered into the Pico de Europa National Park now and wow! This is possibly one of the most scenic drives I have ever seen. Everything is just towering round about us. All such rugged landscapes that we've got a river flowing on one side, the next minute it's on the other side. The roads are really narrow and winding and they're all going through the mountains. And I cannot wait to get further in because so far I'm very impressed. We were actually just saying that this feels very much like Caminito del Rey in Malaga. I don't know if any of you have ever been but there is a boardwalk that goes through the middle of the canyon and this is what it feels like. It feels like we are driving the boardwalk. It is really cool. Oh, oh wow, there's a lot of vans. Oh, we're late to the party, <laughs> I think. Right, we're going to be sleeping standing up, but look at that view. Oh, oh look, that's amazing. And so guys, I just wanted to quickly let you know that our big Easter sale is now on on our website so you can get any of the Destination Earth Guides 10% off and you can even get the packages such as like the North Coast 500 package where you can get our Where to Eat and Stay book and the Destination NC 500 book 10% off. All you need to do is use a little code I'm going to put right here. The sale is only going to be on for 48 hours so make sure you go quick and let's get back to the video. Good morning everybody from the incredible Pico de Europa National Park right here in the north of Spain. We arrived here late last night and we haven't actually had a chance to look at it in the daylight yet but wow this place is absolutely taking my breath away. We parked up just outside the small town of Pots and this has been the view that's been waking us up this morning. Just sunlight crisping that mountain range over there and it is looking absolutely insane. Do not let my very optimistic choice of attire fool you however. It is freezing this morning. You can actually see my breath. That's because we've just driven so high up into the mountains. I believe at this altitude right here we're possibly about 700 to 800 meters above sea level. Yesterday when we left the small town of Santa Lima de Mar we were about sea level and it was lovely and sunny and warm. So truth be told, we did actually kind of stumble across this mountain range by accident. Now everyone knows about the Pyrenees mountain range which sits on the border between France and Spain. However, I had never heard of the Pico de Europa before I actually came here to North Spain. The plan was to just shoot along the coastline before we reached into Portugal and the Pico de Europa National Park just happened to be in our way. I have to say, I think this is one of the best hidden gems that I have ever stumbled across because so far it is just absolutely magical. I 
to head out and explore the local town. So welcome to Popes. Now this small town has been here since the 9th century and it is nestled in amongst all of the mountains in the Pico de Europa and it is just absolutely beautiful. It's so quaint. It's quite touristy I believe because there are a lot of restaurants, a lot of little shops and it has just got a beautiful vibe to it. It is honestly just so picturesque here guys. There's this beautiful river that just runs straight through the centre of Popes and it just creates this beautifully peaceful setting. Especially when you combine that with the towering mountains all around us, I feel like we're more in Austria or Switzerland rather than the north of Spain. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from this town right now. I just love it here so much. And I think that is exactly the kind of thing we're looking for. Oh, stop. What do you think? Especially with that view right there. That sounds good. I am definitely going to check that menu. Right, okay, so we've not had breakfast yet and it is now kind of past lunchtime. So we decided to go for one of each and share them. I don't even know what to say about these pancakes, by the way. They are coated in chocolate. Like and how much does that cost? And it costs three euros eighty. So when we saw that, we were like, well, come on, obviously. And then it's a crepe so we also decided to get a spinach and ricotta crepe, which looks amazing. It's like covered in walnuts. I think we should start with the breakfast first, go pancakes and then go crepe. Sounds good. And we need to decide who gets two and who gets one, because there's three. Well, I know that you're going to want two. Will I have one? We'll you <laughs> so we actually ended up getting a coffee and a coke to go alongside that and it only cost 17 euros. The coffee is so cheap here, it was 1 euro 40 for a coffee with milk. This was 9 euros 50 and as we said that was 3 euros 80. For such a touristy town it's actually not overly expensive which I am very surprised about. That is the chocolatiest thing in the world, I'm not mad about it, that is so good. Wow. This is the tastiest thing I've ever eaten. Honestly, this view, this drive, might be one of the most scenic that I've ever done. We were saying last week about how much it reminds us of like the Isle of Skye and just driving through the mountains there. But right now, it's lush green, rolling hills, and then there's just this dramatic peak or collection of peaks with snow caps right in front of us. It is like nothing I've ever seen before. It is absolutely incredible. Right now, it's actually really reminding me of Austria. We went up a cable car to the top of the mountains there many years ago, and we actually took a bus out of the city centre to where the cable cars were, but we had to walk, I think, for about half an hour, and this reminds me of the road that we were walking along where we could see those mountains that we were going to get the cable car up. It's just breathtaking. Is that not just one of the most incredible views that you've ever seen? Like it's one of those mountains that you see up close and honestly I can't believe it's actually real. Every time I look away from it, I need to re-look again just to make sure it's not some kind of picture or painting in the backdrop because it is just insane. But there's one way to get an even better view without actually tiring our legs out too much. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. That is one steep cable car. Apparently it goes up to 6,000 feet, I think it is, and it takes four minutes. You can like just see the exit way up there. That is some distance, man. Oh, this is so exciting. up here. This is magical. How was I getting sunburned yesterday and now I can go and throw a snowball? I'm noticing a fair temperature difference I have to say. brave enough to stand on the holes in the floor. Oh, I think I might need to do it after you. Oh. What do you think? Okay. Are you doing it? Mm. I need to put these on. Less risk of them blowing off my face. Right, hold on. <laughs> I don't know. Is that <laughs> holding on makes any difference? You're brave. Uh, you can do it. Oh. I shouldn't have eaten those pancakes. <laughs> making a noise. Is that cracking? Okay, we're all good. Oh. Even just the wind that is like coming up through the floor here is very intimidating. <laughs> So 
So we are now 750 metres higher than we were down there. We literally just rolled the cable car all the way up. It took about four minutes, and I swear it was the quickest four minutes of my life. The views were absolutely spectacular. And I didn't actually realise how quick the cable car was actually flying up here until the other cable car went past us and it was like, shoo! I think they said it's about 10 metres per second the cable car travels at. But now we're up here, the views are absolutely incredible. There's snow that you can actually go and walk on. Down there, we were sunbathing and now up here in less than four minutes, we can actually have a snowball fight. All right, back down we go. I just descended so quickly, my ears won't stop popping. <laughs> so we successfully made it back down off the mountain. The only problem now, however, is we kind of cut it a bit tight getting here in terms of diesel. It was 35 kilometers from the nearest gas station, but we wanted to get here before it got cloudy because apparently it was gonna cloud over this afternoon. And we have 35 kilometers to get all the way back to it now. According to our gas tank, we have 32 miles, which is 45 kilometers. Luckily, it's mostly downhill. I'm hoping that Ellie's just been a bit of a pessimist and she'll be able to chug herself along all the way to the gas station or we might just need to be rescued for the first time in Spain. What do we think, Ellie? Are we going to make it? Well, that's good. She's, oh, that's up good. she's optimistic I know, least. that's yeah. good. I'm optimistic too. Yeah. And so we're back in Poets now, where we're going to be spending the night because tomorrow we're preparing for our final stretch of our big Spanish road trip. But until then guys, we're just going to say goodnight now. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up as it just lets us know we're doing the right thing. And if you want to see more van life in Europe, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and we'll see you again in the next one.